122 to 114 was the final tonight. Celtics, 16 of 21 they have dropped. And no Kemba Walker, no Daniel Tice. And Marcus Smart continuing to be out of the lineup. Three key starters missing here. The trends we've seen all season, whether it be inconsistent lineups, defensive woes, particularly on the interior. Hawks started 21 of 25 from inside in this one. Clint Capella could walk to the rim wherever he wanted. There were stretches of layup lines for the Hawks in this one. And it all spread to the fourth quarter where Trey Young dropped a double-digit final frame. Hit a couple deep threes and shut down the Celtics' comeback attempt. That drew pretty close. Jason Tatum had a couple big shots. Got fouled on a three-pointer by John Collins, who we'll get to. And they were able to get within four, but they were missing three points from a Jeff Teague stretch that ultimately defined this game. Payne Pritchard picked up his fifth foul in the fourth quarter. Uh, Stevens pulled them first with about six minutes left. Brought back in Pritchard, picked up that fifth foul, and then went back to Teague, who had a couple turnovers, a missed shot on the interior, and eventually went toward following Clint Capella, sending him a free throw line on purpose, where he made two of four that ultimately helped ice this game. So, where could they go in this one? They started Jalen Brown. They started Jason Tatum, Semi Ojale, Tristan Thompson, some of the regular contributors. Uh, but no Peyton Pritchard in that starting lineup and no Robert Williams, who was outstanding. Both those guys certainly got their run throughout this one and had chances to stop the Hawks. So they weren't answers. They played better in this game. Their bench run in that late first quarter stretch was the best the Celtics played in this entire contest. But nothing lasted. Whether it was Grant Williams making a few key plays here or there, Semi Ojale hitting some threes. Nothing that the Celtics could put on the court in terms of lineups worked. But this was the first game where I looked at Brad Stevens a little bit sideways when it was Semi, Tristan, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Jeff Teague late in the fourth quarter. Teague's given them nothing all year. He's, they're not building toward anything with Jeff Teague. He might be their second best point guard out here if he's still better than Tremont Waters. And Waters certainly didn't get the chance to get going earlier in this game. But playing Teague at this point in the season when changes will be coming in the weeks to come and he his contract will be the easiest to move on from for a roster spot is hard to grapple with. So Celtics lose this one. They fouled a ton 25 times, sent the Hawks to the free throw line a substantial number and never gave themselves a chance to give themselves a solid foundation on the interior, which is what they needed uh, to prevent this Hawks team from getting away from them. But I mentioned that John Collins three-pointer. That gave them a chance. Some porous defense of their own. Uh, Tatum it had a great game. Jalen Brown a little slower in this one. But overall, another inconsistent effort from the Celtics. Missing Kemba Walker. He'll return on Friday against the Hawks here in the same building. Uh, but can Brad Stevens find any answers internally at this point? Maybe for a night here or there, if they run into an opponent like the Denver Nuggets coming back from the West Coast, uh, down a few starters themselves. That's the only glimpse of light we have with this team right now. And Danny Ainge, Mike Zarin, were courtside to see it all happen. Both of them were right on the sideline as this one got away from the Celtics throughout several key stretches here. Are they imagining John Collins, who hit the Celtics with four or five uh, field goals in that first quarter, finished strong with an offensive rebound put back? and the foul. I didn't show off his jump shot on this one. That kind of comes and goes on him and his defense isn't the best but he's a young player still with upside and one who could factor into the Celtics for years to come in a position that they like. A small ball five, a versatile four with some leaping ability, athleticism and the potential to hit three pointers. He'll be expensive. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be a massive cost to retain him in Boston if the Celtics acquire him, and they'll be in a bidding war to get him. I know the Houston Rockets and others have been interested in John Collins, and his contract is easily matchable at you know just over $5 million. But I, you want to go big with this, and the enticing thing about that $5 million is you can offload some assets here, maybe funnel them to a third team, get some things to the Hawks that they want. Because uh, the Hawks certainly haven't been in the best position themselves either this year. There's been reports that they want to move on from Collins. That's going to be one of the names floating around the Celtics. And he certainly hurt them in this one with energy, rebounding, and the ability to move the offense, whether it be through cuts or 
putbacks. And the Celtics get offensive rebounds, but tonight was another night. We don't see that they do much with them. So that's it from here. 122 to 114 is the final. Still no solutions for the Celtics and a gazillion questions. Uh, Check out the Garn Report. Check out our CLNS Media Celtics post-game show and our channel for all the podcast uh, reactions. Celtics Beat, Goodman Ryan Podcast, as well as uh, Dome Theory with me, Bobby Manning, and our whole Garn Report crew. Uh, check us out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow our social media, Celtics CLNS, on Twitter. And we'll be back here on Friday for Hawks versus Celtics. Bye.